So Rohan, as we were discussing, and you told me that back in the day, in terms of minimum wage, you were making fourteen dollars an hour, and today you're making one twenty-five thousand dollars a year. What do you think brought that change, and why is it important for others to know it? I'll give you a little background about myself. I came here as a student. I had no professional connections. Mm-hmm. I did develop hundreds of personal connections, probably even thousands of personal connections. But when it came to looking for a job, I wasn't able to secure anything because there were no professional connections which were able to help me or guide me, right. provide me proper mentorship, uh, provide me with connections that would be useful to land a job within this country. And that's when i realized that i need a mentor i need people who can guide me i need to use their connections to progress within my career and as soon as i realized it within a span of a couple of years i was able to get all the way to 125k and probably one uh, 200k this year Thanks. so yeah. um, if i may add to this uh, it's actually been a very a topic that hits home for me like it's very personal to me that when i landed in uh, canada hmm. just like you so i didn't have any connection back in the day probably back in india i had like a lot of tons yeah. of connections because my mom knows people my yeah. dad knows people all my, of us yeah. right yeah. so yeah. so we have friends who have yeah. friends in large corporations but out here probably i had more or less nobody maybe one or two people whom i knew but not sure if they would be able to or they would be willing to go you know out of their way to help me all the way so um what i was able to do was forge strong meaningful connections in multiple industries but primarily my own field so you know within procurement there are so many fields like it can be done in automation it can be done in uh, nuclear and a lot of other industries so i was actually blessed to meet that one of these uh, mentors who told me that you know procurement can be done in an industry where you could make 40 45000 a year versus you could also be making like upwards of 120000 a year d- depending on which industry you pick and then how much uh, effort you put in to get that job right it's not just like oh okay i pick this industry no you have to actually go out and then make those more you know make more of those meaningful connections so i totally concur with that and then uh, i also felt that once in a while it used to happen that these mentors you know they may not necessarily be available all day all night long right so which is why having multiple mentors one may be you know an an expert in probably uh, absorbing canadian culture and helping me understand why it's necessary to absorb just the way they say uh, when in rome be roman yes. so the same way i was i think i was blessed to come across so many mentors who wanted to help me and then you know the fact that i went out and asked with a particular strategy of uh, building connections and having an eventual thing in mind that i want to give back to the society so probably they sensed it and they also wanted to you know help me out so probably back in the day somebody would have helped them and now they wanted to help me and i understood that having these connections actually would have put me probably at least 2 3 4 years ahead in my life which otherwise wouldn't have happened because i think whatever money that i made you know probably at the start of that year i was making in march 22 i was making like 15 dollars an hour somewhere around around that and then by the end of the year i was making a six figure salary and it was only possible because i had the right mentors and because of that i think i was able to then uh, focus on other things something like this like you know helping others yeah. and then i feel that if i didn't have mentors back in the day i wouldn't be sitting here you know talking in front of the camera being blessed again yeah. so uh as we've agreed that having the right professional network is very important which is where we as maple talent hub have come forward and we built hundreds of professional connections and these connections are not just with you know somebody who's making probably a minimum wage or even an uber driver but going all the way up to vps vps of large corporations which are also you know crown corporations so we feel blessed in a way that if we have these right set of connections we would like to use these meaningful connections to add value to not just your life but even to other people's lives you know these connections they are they also feel blessed to give it back to the society but at the same point of time there's a particular protocol that they would want you to follow if somebody just you know i can take that number and put it on a platform and then a person will be like oh i have the number of you know let's say a vp of a large bank i don't want to take a name the name starts with c and then ends with c the four letter bank so if a person does that and you know if the number is available so easy it wouldn't be it wouldn't have any meaning right because that number can be circulated all over the internet and this person will eventually have to block each one of you and primarily me exactly. because <laughs> i'm i'm the source of all this problem right so yeah. uh, building these connections is one thing maintaining an, is another and then enhancing is another so i feel connections are your net worth so they say your network is your net worth i deeply believe that yes. and do you want to add something or else we could move on to the next element 
definitely the only thing that i would like to say is i second to what you mentioned network is your net worth yes you will not realize it today but when your network start turning in starts turning into your net worth yes. that's when you will know that it it's a switch it's like a switch it just turns on at a point yes. and at that point you will realize that why have you not done this yes, before yes, yes. why did you sleep on networking i totally agree and i would like to add one more point before we move on to the next element i uh, i used to feel that probably one or two mentors are good enough but i don't think that's true because uh, i realize that what happens is see just like you know uh, the universe has so many elements like fire or uh, fire earth water and stuff whatever so i mean if one just relies on water because water is very important and then if you ignore fire you actually miss out on a lot so the same way i feel you know uh, one of the mentors could be a specialist in communication while the other could enhance your personality while the third one could help you with the right certification and what's going on in the current market but may not necessarily be the best at communication so if you would have picked one out of these three you would have definitely missed out on something yeah, right yeah. so i feel i was blessed to have several mentors and which is what we feel that one might want to experience you know having several mentors so that if they connect more to someone they might you know avail more of those services rather than the other right so uh, moving on to the next one what is your take on confidence how important is confidence i strongly believe that confidence is the key to cracking any situation any tough situation yes. it could be your first day at your new job it could be cracking an interview it could be you standing right in front of a thousand people yes and speaking up to them right if you don't have confidence these people are not going to believe you if you don't have confidence you are not going to crack that into even if you have if even if you are 10 on 10 on your technical skills on your interpersonal skills if you don't have confidence you are not going to get that job can i give one i would like to add one example from history it just clicked my mind right now i don't know if it's a good time but so back in the day you guys might want to read upon napoleon yeah. so napoleon was at one point of time dethroned and he lost all of his kingdom to someone else and then this king was good enough to not kill him and he was sent on an exile i don't know exiled or sent on an exile to a nearby island and there were i think around 500 600 guards to that prison mm. and they were told your only job is to you know make sure that this guy stays in and he doesn't come out because if he comes out he is actually going to conquer everything and then these guards used to think how will he conquer so one fine day napoleon woke up and he said you know what i'm not going to eat and the guard goes like come on you be our king and you know it'll be nice if you could have some food and then he says you know what i'm not going to eat i'm not going to eat and i haven't been your king temporarily i've always been your king i'm still your king right now and this guard says what do you mean he said open the open the gates and he said what so he actually told them open the gates i'm not eating food i am the king i'm going to walk back up to my throne and i'm going to claim it and this is what confidence is that the confidence in him compelled the guard to talk to other guards all the guards came together they opened the gates they actually sailed with him back to france all 600 of them who were supposed to guard them became a part of his army they didn't wage a war he said i will not wage a war he actually went walking through france all the way to the kingdom and he told people in general if you guys think i'm not your king like the like people at large masses and he told them if you think i'm not your king just kill me just tell me and i will not be your king and nobody said anything and he actually walked up all the way and before he could reach uh, you know the king who was in power he was informed that this is happening he didn't have to wage a war he actually went on to walk all the way up to the throne because people said yeah he is our king so this is what i think confidence does if you believe in yourself truly it doesn't matter what you are what really matters is what is going on in your head what you think is what you become yep. right so i think uh, confidence is a non negotiable which is why having moving on to the next element having the right mindset is also the key do you want to throw some confidence is part of the mindset right like if your mindset is not right you are not able to get that amount of confidence that you need yeah you might think that you have the positive mindset you have the confidence that you need uh, to achieve something but who's going to show you the mirror yes is your maybe your kid going to show you the mirror is your partner going to show you the mirror on a professional level you need somebody who is not related to you yes. to show you the mirror to yes. tell you that okay your mindset is Okay, it's fair but you can get better right 
this is these are the things that you can improve and you need somebody at a professional level to tell you that or else you are not going to believe that right. it's very important for somebody who has achieved something big within the industry to come and show you the mirror and to show you the path along with the mirror yes. Yes. to fall uh, for you to follow that path you need guidance yes. and that's where mentorship comes in place for sure if i could add something that is pretty related is um, i think mindset also has other elements which yeah. also include knowing your worth so i think uh, what happens for the most part is that a lot of times people feel that okay i've come from india or probably some other country of course i've come all the way from my homeland and it's okay i just need a good full time job which pays me anything about 40000 anything about 50000 anything about 60000 anything about 70000 so they think like you know so honestly i used to tell a lot of people that i got like you know the moment i got a full time gig i told them i was getting uh, 75000 and they used to congratulate me but when i used to tell my mother that i got a 75000 dollar job for the first time and i told her she started crying and she sort of ha- felt pity for me that oh you got like just yeah. a 75000 dollar job so it's all in the mindset and the moment she said that and it hit me that there's much more value yes. that i can add to other people's lives 75000 dollar job is nothing looking at the experience that i may have had the same way a lot of people back in you know their homelands may be making like a hell lot of money and may not necessarily be making a lot hell lot of money but would have a whole lot of experience which would probably get them a good 120 130k job but then just because others feel oh getting a 65000 dollar job like the first one is pretty cool we're not saying it's it is or it's not what the point i'm trying to make is that you might want to know your worth right so how do you decide your worth what's your take on that for me Yeah. my mentor held a mirror in front of me okay he told me that these are your skills i was th- this is actually a true story and this uh, happened when i was at a 15 dollar an hour job okay. doing a basic role of customer service okay. one fine day he came up to me and he was like you have been doing this for what 3 4 months now is this where you want to settle down like i don't see you applying for other jobs i don't see you doing anything else like are you gaining any more certificates are you in process of doing it are you even thinking about it are you even thinking of developing your technical skills and that hit me i'm getting comfortable i'm getting too comfortable yeah and i forgot what i what my goal was it it was blurry and at that point he held a mirror in front of me he told me that don't forget we are here to make it big if you just want to earn that enough to feed you for two times you can do this job for a lifetime it will it will feed you or you can be jobless you will you will still get money from the government in canada yes, yes. unfortunately it's not enough to make it big <laughs> right yeah, so you yeah. need to you, you need somebody to show you a mirror and you need somebody to tell you your worth now i wouldn't overhype somebody who is coming to me but i also w- would tell them that this is what you deserve right. when somebody comes to me and tells that rohan i'm i'm a fresh graduate a 20 dollars an hour a tech support job or customer service job would be amazing for me mm-hmm. like okay i understand you are a fresh graduate but what kind of skills do you possess like it's okay you will be able to survive at 20 dollars an hour job but you don't may need to make it public yeah the interviewer shouldn't know that you can survive the recruiter shouldn't know you should first of all you should know your worth if you have skills that can earn you 60 70 80 6 figures why to settle at 20 dollars an hour even if you are able to survive yes why to settle there for sure are you did you actually travel thousands of kilometers across the world to just settle down yeah i'm pretty sure you were making it enough to settle back home did yeah. you travel all the way here to just settle with a basic living no mm-hmm. so it i think has, it's very it has, important so i think it also has something to do with a couple of things that you mentioned certificates oh, yeah. so i feel um, sometimes it so happens it, on both positive and negative end, ends that i came here and i was told by a lot of people you know what probably you might want to pursue a certification mm-hmm. honestly with a world full of experience like 8 plus years of experience i don't think i needed to do that I could do it if I really want to but I don't think I needed to do that. And that's the thing like my mindset was very clear and then I spoke to a few mentors and they said you know what you don't need to like you have a world for of experience probably absorption of Canadian culture or stuff like that would be more important and then finding out your USP. So everyone has a USP. My USP that I felt was that um I think I, this is what I feel I could be wrong but I feel uh, that I can communicate decently well. So I, I think can confidence. confidence probably confidence confidence is also your <laughs> so <USP>. so so <laughs> one thing that happened a very funny story i want to thank my ex boss so the interview that i gave i think i was asked just two questions both the questions i was wrong and then um, i was i think i was then asked a third question and then i said this this one i don't know so <laughs> so like two uh, two wrong answers and then one 
like disclaim like claiming that I don't know that and then apart from that but I went on to speak for 60 minutes non stop so out of 60 minutes of that interview I was probably asked stuff for like 3 or 4 minutes so it was me speaking for 56 minutes straight and i and i felt like if you guys keep this going we can keep this going i'm pretty cool with that <laughs> so i was like I, i had that vibe and i think that's that's a large part of the game so my usp is for example i feel that i'm able to articulate hmm. decently well whereas someone may have a usp of skills for example like oh, yeah. so i you know initially when i used to compare myself which one shouldn't but then when you have you know you go on linkedin and then you see this open position and then you see like 375 applicants then you go like okay i might want to check probably what the, what these other guys are doing in life in general and then you know you compare and then you go that wrong uh spiral but i used to compare myself like just looking at someone else's cv and then looking at mine and then i used to think oh i don't have this i don't have that and in comparison to this i don't have masters i don't have this and i just used to feel pathetic about myself eventually i realized it doesn't even matter like just focus on your usp some organizations may not necessarily need your skills yes. you can actually become the head of an organization if you truly believe in it and for example if you think your articulation is top notch and it's 100 on 100 probably an organization needs more of that than real skills of course like heading an organization you need real skills which you may already have and they can be enhanced if you have an internal mentor within that organization as well this is another thing that i realized like some people think oh getting the job is the goal no getting a job is good but even retaining it like getting mentors into the in that organization where you're working are also very important what is your take on this do you think people even discuss the need to work on themselves after getting the job in that organization and having a strategy to retain it unfortunately the harsh truth is that they don't because again the same thing they get comfortable they get comfortable once they make a living I and agree. yeah i understand you have struggled for a few months when you were looking for a job and you want to reward yourself not think too much about career progression temporarily however don't get comfortable in that zone take your time take a couple of months but do find ways to progress within the organization or even outside of the organization once the time comes and the right way to do it is if you are looking to progress within the organization is to find a mentor within that organization who has years and years of experience serving the same organization and will be able to tell you pros and cons of being in his shoes if you are actually looking to remain in a company for let's say 10 years why don't you go and talk to somebody who has been there for 15 years right they will actually tell you pros and cons of being there for that long right they might be regretting that decision yes, yes. and they might be able to tell you the truth mm, correct and this happened with me in my last job i was so much dedicated to the company that i didn't look for jobs for one and a half year i didn't get any promotion i was just working 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 and all of a sudden one day it clicked me that i'm not progressing yeah. i'm not growing yeah like okay yeah i'm a director i'm i'm doing this i'm handling this i'm doing that but what next yeah 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 it's been one and a half year no progress mm. i need to get somewhere else like yeah. i need to rush yeah i went to somebody who was who was there in the organization for 20 years mm. uh, i talked to the person completely separate department uh, we were friends anyways like i i love networking with people so i build a personal connection with anybody that i speak with I I don't know if it's it might be my USP I build a personal connection very fast with somebody that I speak yeah, with. Yeah. So I went to that person I was like you have been here for 20 years. Should I be here for 20 years? He was like no. <laughs> Get out of here as soon as you can. Nice. I was like why do you say this? Like you are a uh, no names of the company or anything but he was a director of a big hedge fund. Right. Uh he was like no get out of here. I was like why do you say this? Yeah. He's like I see your skills. I see your enthusiasm I see how much you are passionate about things and I think that some other company will reward you better than what this company is able to Nice you're actually lucky that you got that Yeah feedback. exactly and that's why building that personal connection within the organization is extremely important right. and people should not be lacking on it like I did <laughs> So I have one point one strong element that we may have missed uh, thank you for this uh, insight CV resume Oh yeah updation optimization some people still ask me in 2024 when ai is taking over i get a message bro what is ats <laughs> so i feel i feel sad i, I mean you know uh, i don't blame them entirely but if you're a newcomer in your career you know probably you're here for 6 months or for a year it's still considerable but if you've been in your career for a good 10 plus years and you're asking me bro what is ats in 2024 march I think we're having a bit of a challenge. What do you think? Uh, there are a lot of organizations, job scan this that, but what do you think is the importance of optimizing your resume building and how important is ATS? Is it important every single time, or is it just in 
once in a while so well having an ats optimized resume is very important mm -hmm. uh, there are always two side of coins one side is uh, having an ats optimized resume and you will be able to apply for any jobs no matter through referral without referral through a recruiter uh, directly to a company doesn't matter wherever you right. want to apply you apply everywhere if you have a non ats friendly resume yes you still might be able to land a job but that one month journey might be stretched to four months right instead of that one connection maybe you will need to reach out to 1000 different people in order to get a job right right so ats friendly resume will definitely make your life a lot easier i will tell you one thing personally when i used to hire people uh, this is last year itself i only used to get resumes that were scanned through the ats okay so if it makes if it passes the ats only in that case the resume comes to me well it still goes to the recruiter and then re recruiter does the screening and sends Regardless it to of me no how qualified you are no nope. doesn't matter how qualified if you have 10 years of experience 20 years of experience and you are applying for a junior role if you don't have an ats friendly resume you would not be getting that role that i was i was going for yeah, yeah yeah so when i used to hire i used to give a resume 5 seconds <laughs> and i'm so, i'm sorry i might be the villain here but i only used to give the resume 5 seconds because i don't have half an hour to read a 7 page resume correct it's not happening right. first of all i had to what, what do you think about the photos that a lot oh no not at all <laughs> not at all come on it's 2024 like a selfie <laughs> it's 2024 we are not doing that in the resume yes <laughs> not happening um, i used to give the resume 5 seconds i need to know f within 5 seconds i need to know a few things your name your location where are you located your role your most recent role even before i go to your experience i need to know the most recent role on the top the amount of years of experience that you have within the industry yes. and your specialities 